Hi there. Are you making some mistakes with your social distancing? Think you're doing it all right, but maybe you're not? I think that you have some things to think about, probably, because most of us are doing something wrong or making mistakes. Hi, I'm Donna Denson, the Dynamic Diabetic, and I want to talk to you today about what those mistakes might be so you can correct them. Social distancing is going to be a thing for a while for most of us. So we need to make sure that we're doing things in a way that actually makes sense and does us some good, right? So first of all, number one, are your kids having play dates? Are your kids still playing with other kids? I know it's so hard, but get, kids can get this disease, the COVID-19 and you as a diabetic, you have to worry about that. You have to be concerned if you are going to get this through your child, right? So play dates are not a good idea. Um, you may think, well, I'm not diabetic or um, I'm not sick. I'm not one of those people. I'm not old. You know, you're safe, right? Well, think again, you're not safe, you're not immune. 40% of the people that have had this have been between the ages of 20 and 54, 40%. So that's almost half. You may think that number three, going to the park is a safe thing, right? You go to the park, you're outside, it's fresh air, it's all great. But if you're uh, touching anything in the park, the virus can live on surfaces. So you can't be touching the playground equipment. Your kids shouldn't be touching the playground equipment. Um, picnic table, anything like that. Don't be touching surfaces. It is good to be outside in the fresh air, though. Number four, you might be exercising with others. I know a lot of people that are doing this, and they think because they're outside, that again, they're safe. But they're walking together, and... Uh, the wind blows, guys. <laughs> so if somebody coughs, somebody sneezes, and you're probably not wearing a mask when you're trying to work out so much, the wind can blow that virus around. Number five, you're handling wearing a mask, but then you're handling taking it off. Not wisely. The best way to do that is to wash your hands, undo the loops, take it off, wash your hands again then at some point you need to wash the mask and you'll be washing your hands through that same process. Um, number six, you're not staying really six feet apart. Uh, yesterday I had to go pick up some groceries curbside and when I came back I noticed some of my neighbors in the driveway. They were all sitting around in their lawn chairs in the driveway and I thought, well, that's really cool. They're having a little happy hour, you know, but then when I looked again, I realized they weren't six feet apart. They were probably about three feet apart, but they weren't wearing masks uh, because they were outside. So they thought they were fine. They were safe, but they weren't. I'm not saying that every time you do one of these things, you're going to get sick, but these are the things that we're doing without thinking, without realizing what they might cause for us. Um, shopping too much. It's gotten real easy to like make short, quick trips to the store. If you're going in the store, you are putting yourself at risk the more often you go. Um, I've been doing the curbside pickup or the delivery so that I don't have to worry about that. I can shop often, right? Because I'm not being exposed, but you're still being exposed even when you've got the groceries off your porch. Those things have been handled by somebody else, maybe several somebodies you don't know. Um, this one was really tricky for me, and that was exposing your eyes. I was not, I've never heard anybody comment on the fact that the virus can get in your eyes. And uh, so if you wear glasses, you have some bit of protection. Uh, but if you don't, you need to have goggles or something. And I would feel like a space cadet by the time I put all this on, but just saying, guys. 
Number nine, you may be using your gloves, but some people are taking those gloves off and then putting them back on for another trip, or um, they're, they're touching all these things with their gloves and then touching their face. If you have worn your gloves and you've been to the store, you've been wherever, you wanna take those gloves off so that they go inside out and throw them away. Don't reuse them. Don't reuse them. Um, and number 10 would be kind of obvious to me, but I think not to everyone. And that is having people over into your home. Even if you feel like they are safe, they haven't been anywhere, you know, they're not going to cause you a problem. And still, it's, that's poor judgment to do because it does put you at risk. And I'm specifically uh, reaching out to my diabetics to say, these are all things that could put you in jeopardy. Some of them are like going to be really hard not to do, but they're not as hard as having that virus. You know, it's that old thing if you think um, wellness is tough, try being ill, right? Try sickness. So guys, protect yourself. Do the extra step if you have one of the vulnerabilities, if you're older, if you have a, a, an immune system that has trouble, any of those things, listen to these extra 10 things. And I'm even going to add something today that I hadn't planned to do. And that is um, recently they have added new symptoms to the COVID-19. We started out with three basics, you know, a big cough, shortness of breath, a fever. Well, now they've added 11 more. If you're experiencing chills, which you could also just have the regular flu, but that's one of the things you don't seem to be able to get warm. If those chills make you shake, if they end up that way, that could be a symptom. If your muscles are aching, again, this could be just the regular flu, but it could also be that you worked out yesterday or it could be that you overdid in some way. So you're looking for a combination of symptoms to make sure. Uh, a headache could just be a headache, but in combination with other symptoms, it may be more. Sore throat, not just a cough, but now the sore throat. This seems to be a big thing and that's a loss of the sense of taste or smell. Yeah, uh, chest pain that is persistent, won't quit. Uh, this one's interesting, pink eye. <laughs> if you get pink eye, that could, in connection with other symptoms, be a sign of COVID. Bluish lips or your face could be a sign. And the last one, confusion. If you are abnormally confused, uh, just having trouble putting things together, that could also be a sign. So today, not only do we want to be safe in our social distancing and making sure that we're doing all the things we should be doing, but I want you to be aware of those new symptoms so that you can protect yourself and know when you need to be checked. That was a lot today. <laughs> um, I hope that you got some value in that, that you learned something new you didn't know before that will help you to stay safe in this pandemic. Again, my name is Donna Denson. I am the Dynamic Diabetic, and I really appreciate you being here to watch this today. Please share this video with other people that need to know these things. Um, if you are diabetic and you haven't joined my free Facebook group, please do so. I'd love to support you there. And um, if you found this good, make me a comment. Make me a comment so that I know that I'm on the right track for you. All right. Thank you so much. May God bless and keep you until we connect again. Hope you're well, you're safe, and you're happy. This is Donna saying bye-bye for now.